All right, guys, welcome to the shack. And today I'm going to try to answer a question that I get a lot. And that is, what's the best laser engraver for somebody that's just starting out? And guys, we're not going to go into any of the specifics of the different brands. Uh, but what I will tell you is in the past couple of years, I've had the opportunity to test out use and even some of the machines I have put into production for multiple, multiple projects. I have experience with around 40 lasers of varying power outputs, build quality, size, and price at this point. And the things that I will tell you, I'm just, I'm not going to tell you which machine to buy, but I'm going to give you an idea of the things that you need to consider and you need to get yourself out of list. And uh, if you want to do that now, this would be a good time. Uh, just get yourself out a, a sticky note or a piece of paper or make a note on your phone of the following things and help let this help guide you through your purchase. Uh, as you know, I do have affiliate accounts with multiple companies, laser companies, uh, from Adam Stack to X Tool to Lasermatic, uh, Roly, uh, Longer, a, a lot of the different companies. So I'm not, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other which machine you purchase. I'm not trying to tell you which one to buy, but I want to help you make the most informed decision before you spend that money. Now, with that said, money. That is the biggest consideration that you need to take into effect. Uh, I understand that what my budget and your budget and your neighbor's budget are not going to be the same. Uh, whether this is a hobby or whether you already have a successful woodworking business and are just wanting to add this on or whether you're a retired person who just wants something to do and be creative and have that creative outlet, uh, maybe you don't have the resources or the money to purchase the Cadillac right out of the gate. And neither did I, guys. I started out with a bare bones machine, 10 watt diode laser, no honeycomb, no air assist, no exhaust. I had to engineer all of my own things to use to get started with the machine. And then as I progressed, as I got better, as I made money with the machine, I just bought accessories along the way until I got my machine to the way that it needed to be. Uh, but that's an option. So if anybody tells you, you gotta go all out or none, that's not true. You can. Now, you may not get some of the things that some of the other machines offer. Absolutely. You, you should not expect to get the same results or the same dependability or the same functionality out of a $400 machine as you will a $3,000 machine, naturally. Uh, when you're shopping for cars, you know, you can go get the Lexus or you can go get the stripped down Toyota. It's your choice. It's all a matter of what you can afford. Uh, nothing's worse than spending a bunch of money on a machine and then having to go through that learning curve of the machine and not being able to recoup your money. I know there are people out there that uh, will, will extend the payment of a machine by putting it on a credit card or whatever in order to get a machine in hopes that they can make money with it eventually. And there's nothing worse than overextending yourself, having all that overhead, and now you're under so much pressure to try to make projects, sell stuff, make money to pay for this machine. That's not where you want to be. Nothing suppresses creativity more than stress. And nothing stresses most people more than financial burden that has been created in an attempt to make money. Uh, so keep that in, the, in, in consideration. Never outspend your budget uh, if you can help it. Uh, sometimes things happen. But try to keep that to a minimum, guys. So, so the biggest thing is... Put you a note down. What is your budget? How much money are you willing to spend on this venture? There's a lot of variables. Okay, second thing to consider, uh, space, work area. Where are you gonna be? Uh, your work area and where you're gonna be doing your projects are gonna dictate a lot about the purchase that you need to make. Uh, if you're a someone who has a small shop in the back of your house and you're the only person in there and you don't have pets or cats, dogs, uh, any kind of animal with eyes, then you may not need some of the safety equipment because you may be comfortable with just using goggles or glasses and taking care of your own eyes, and you may not need the safety equipment. However, if you're a stay-at-home mom or if you're a retired person with grandkids that's come over a lot or whatever the case may be, then you're going to want to lean more towards safety conscious. Or if you have cats that like to jump on tables and check things out, 
you're going to want to go with something more enclosed and be a little more safety conscious. So that part of your workspace and your environment is going to affect that decision. Another big part is, is this machine in your workspace, is it going to be sitting permanently in place or is this going to be something that you're going to have to move uh, because you have other tools that need to occupy that space from time to time or because you park your car there and it needs to be out of the way uh, before the wife comes home. Those are things that you need to consider as well because you're going to want something that, that can be easily disconnected and relocated if that's the case. If that's not the case, then you could build one of these big boxes like I build and you could leave it sitting there and you don't have to have an enclosure and all those things. You can buy the heaviest machine on the market. It doesn't matter because you're not going to be moving it around. Uh, so that's the second reason that I would say uh, you need to, need to consider your work area and where you're going to be using the machine. Another consideration because of your work area is ventilation. Are you outside on your back deck where it's open air and smoke's not an issue? Or are you in a building that has very limited airflow to where those gases and smoke need to be exhausted outside? Because if that's the case, then you're definitely going to want to get a fan. Whether you get an enclosed machine that comes equipped with a fan or whether you purchase your own and engineer something or build your own enclosure, you're going to want to exhaust that in that situation. So those are the two things that I would start out with, okay? The third thing that you need to consider, and this is going to make a big difference as well, is what kind of projects are you going to want to do? Are you just going to be doing tumblers? Are you going to be doing keychains? Are you going to be doing large wall art for, for you know, signs and stuff like that? Are you wanting to engrave tables to where you need to be able to set the machine on the table and engrave it? What exactly is the product or is the projects that you plan to create with the machine? Because some of the machines are going to do a better job at that. They're going to be easier to move from point A to point B. If you're trying to engrave already built tables, then you're going to want something light, compact. Uh, if your biggest engrave is going to be six inches, why do you need a 30 inch workspace? Uh, if you're going to be doing 30 inches, you definitely don't want a six inch workspace. So. In order to decide which machine best suits your use, you're going to need to decide what kind of things are you going to want to make and how big are they going to be and go from there. So the three things so far, of course, is going to be budget because we all know that at the end of the day, <laughs> budget dictates a lot. Your work environment or workshop space and the projects that you plan to create with the device. Okay. One last thing that a lot of people ask me about, and I used to didn't consider this, but after being asked a lot of times, portability, okay? A lot of people don't have the resources to have multiple machines in their shop. I'm fortunate I do have multiple machines, but not everybody does. So if you're one of these folks that want to take your machine to say a craft fair and do things at craft fairs, then you're also gonna wanna consider how portable is it? How are you gonna transport it? what its power needs are, what its exhaust needs are, and those type of things. Because, you know, with, let's say, for instance, the X40 Max back here that I've got, that's not a machine you're going to want to carry to an event. It's massive. It's huge. It has to have all these peripherals that aren't attached to it. So that's not a machine that you're going to want to take to an event. Uh, and as always, guys, Eventually, maybe you'll get to the point to where you can have different machines that specialize with different projects. That's where I'm at now. I have a machine that is, you know, each machine that I have in my shop is really good at some stuff and not so much as the, as the other. That's why I run multiple machines. I can have this guy working on really big projects, this one working on medium sized projects and then smaller uh, acrylic over here. I can have metal going over there eventually you will learn that each machine has its own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, like I said, there's lots of good machines out there, guys. I show lots of machines on my channel. I get affiliate commissions from different companies, but I will never tell you that you should buy this machine or that machine. It is a big variable. There's lots of things to consider. These are the things that I feel like are the most important to consider when making that purchase. And for everybody that keeps asking and trying to get me to nail it down to one particular machine, I'm not going to do it without knowing your unique situation. 
because there's so many good machines on the market. I have had $200 machines in this shop that work great. Now, they were bare bones, they were very uh, economically built, so I don't know how they would hold up long term. I've had other machines that were four or $500 that performed extraordinarily well, but they didn't have the limit switches and the bells and whistles and stuff like that. All of those things aren't required for the laser to operate, but they are nice. Uh, some, of, some of the machines on the market today have you know, cameras, exhausts, all the nice things. They're extremely engineered really well, but with that level of accessories and engineering, up goes the price. The thicker the enclosure material, as far as the acrylic enclosures, the thicker the material is on the enclosure, the price is gonna go up. Some of the machines that are on a more of a budget level, they have a lot thinner acrylic, which is subject to get broken, but it's a lot cheaper. So all of those things, build quality is one of the things that you need to kind of look at. Uh, and by looking at, I mean, watch reviews, see what other people think about them. See if you can see where people have had problems with them. But now one thing I will tell you guys is the unhappy people are far, far more verbal and more subject to put something out on the internet as the happy folks. Happy folks are too busy playing with their lasers to be getting on Amazon or to be getting on YouTube raging about how their machine was terrible and you know service was terrible. The happy people are too busy making stuff. So <laughs> I can honestly say out of all the machines that I've tested in my shop, they've all been really good machines that, that I would recommend a person using if that machine fit the three things that we've discussed. Uh, as far as the reason for selecting a different laser. So I hope the video helps guys. This is a really tough to topic because like I said, I can, I can tell you to buy any machine in the shop, okay? Uh, but I, I'm just, I'm not, that is your decision. And I don't think you should let other people make that decision for you, but hopefully using these little tips, these things to consider, hopefully that will make the decision making better. And uh, if anybody tells you otherwise, then I, I would be a little careful. I'd be a little cautious if, if they're trying to push a particular machine on you too well. Uh, all the companies I work with, they know how I am. Uh, I work a lot with Xtool. I work a lot with Roly. I work a lot with a lot of different companies. Atom Stack. I mean, I've had several Atom Stack machines, but they have never told me that I have to be all in. And they're not going to. Uh, I've only had one company they tried to push the envelope and basically tried to censor some of my stuff and that company I no longer work with. So that just to let you know, <laughs> this is completely unbiased and I'm just giving you my honest opinion because to me, the most important thing about this channel is my integrity and I'm not gonna give that up for any of these companies or no amount of money. So like I said, three things, we're gonna go over one more time just to make sure you got it budget considerations, workspace considerations, and project considerations. Those are the three considerations that I feel like if you make sure that machine fits those three, you'll be happy with it in the long run. Like I said, budget, you do get, with the higher, machine, higher budget, you do get a little bit better amount of resources and certain things. Case in point, the higher budget machines like the X-Tool, a lot of people knock X-Tool for the product and the way that they package everything. They have their own proprietary software, but with that proprietary software, they also have uh, downloadable files, they have materials, packages that you can purchase, and all of those things that would make life easy for somebody that's just getting into lasers. But you're gonna pay a little extra to be a part of that environment that they have created around the machine. Glowforge is one of the other machines on the market and they kind of started this whole uh, total package set up for lasers because a Glowforge, you buy the machine and then you can buy your materials from Glowforge. The settings are already there. You don't have to do any guesswork. You can download the files from them. That's, that's how that is set up to work. If you're just wanting to be creative and make boxes and basic stuff, make your own designs, you may not need that infrastructure to help support you. But if you're brand new to it and you've got a big enough budget, that might make your transition into lasering easier. Uh, but that's something you gotta decide if you wanna pay for. Do you wanna pay for that environment or do you just want the bare bones to, just to get you started? Uh, but anyway, guys, 
Hopefully things will continue evolving the way that they have in the past two years in lasers because it has been, machines have been going and coming. I didn't wanna do a video about any particular machines per se because this time next month, there may be six new machines on the market. But regardless of what machines get released, regardless of what innovations machines make, these three basic principles are gonna hold true because you, you don't, if it doesn't fit the bill for those three, then it's probably not gonna work for you. Uh, and if it does, it'll probably be a painful experience. So hopefully this helps. Uh, and I got plenty of reviews. If you're looking at a particular machine, I do have videos on each particular machine and reviews and some real world use of the machines. And if you do decide to buy a machine as a result of one of my videos, feel free to use the affiliate links, regardless of who makes it, whether it's an Atom Stack, a Niji, uh, Rolly, X Tool, Longer, it doesn't matter. All of those different machines are represented here on the channel because in my opinion, you guys need to know the versatility of what is out there. So hopefully things will continue evolving and we can get some more equipment in the shop soon uh, to test out and see where we're gonna go on this world of laser engraving. So if you hadn't already guys, hit the subscribe button and until next time, be safe and have a good day.